Welcome to the video key for the practice problem, Poisoning Cellular Respiration. In this problem, you're given a case where a patient is admitted into the emergency room suffering from signs of suffocation, and then shortly thereafter dies. And you're put in the role of, a Kate, of an intern working in the medical examiner's office, who's put in charge of figuring out what killed this patient. Because of this patient's symptoms, you suspect that there's something wrong with cellular respiration, and so you order a blood workup and a subcellular metabolite analysis. And your preliminary results show that the levels of pyruvate and acetyl-CoA are normal. And because of this, you suspect that the patient has been poisoned with something that either prevents the electron transport chain from passing electrons, or with something that makes holes in the inner mitochondrial membrane, because either of those are consistent with these normal levels of pyruvate and acetyl-CoA. In this problem, you're asked to predict what the results of your test will be for each of those cases by indicating what you expect the levels of some metabolites to do, whether you expect them to be high, normal, or low. In other words, you're going to generate predictions based on these two hypotheses. So let's consider this first case, this first hypothesis that the electron transport chain won't pass electrons or can't pass electrons you're going to consider the levels of NAD+, NADH, oxygen, and ATP, if this is the case. So let's take a look at cellular respiration. So in the first step of cellular respiration, glycolysis, glucose is converted to two molecules of pyruvate out here in the cytosol of the cell, so out here in the goop that fills the cell. And here we're looking at a mitochondrion that's in that cytosol. So in glycolysis, this first step, and remember that this is actually 10 steps, 10 reactions, and each one is catalyzed by a different enzyme, so keep that in mind. But the net inputs of glycolysis are 2 ADP to generate 2 ATP, and 2 molecules of NAD plus to generate 2 molecules of NADH. And remember that this NADH is an electron carrier, that here it's accepted two high potential energy electrons. So this pyruvate that's been generated during glycolysis is going to get transported in to this mitochondrial matrix, so the main space of the mitochondrion, where it's going to be processed into acetyl-CoA. And in the process of pyruvate processing, it's going to generate some CO2 and also two more molecules of this electron carrier, NADH. And then that acetyl-CoA is going to go through the citric acid cycle. And in the citric acid cycle, we're going to generate a little more ATP. As well as some carbon dioxide and most importantly, more electron carriers. So we're going to reduce two molecules of FAD and six molecules of NAD plus to FADH2 and NADH. And note that so far we haven't generated that much ATP. We've only generated a, t a net of four ATP. So most of our ATP generation has yet to happen. So let's focus on these electron carriers. Because where they carry their electrons is to this electron transport chain. When they pass on these high potential energy electrons to the electron transport chain, they're oxidized back into these forms there, FAD and NAD+. And this FAD and NAD plus is recycled, so it becomes the inputs once again for glycolysis and pyruvate processing in the citric acid cycle. So that's the fate of them, the fate of these high potential energy electrons that get passed on to the electron transport chain. They get passed from one point in the chain to the next, and every time they get passed on to another part, their potential energy is harvested to pump 
protons from the mitochondrial matrix into this cisterna, this little pocket in the mitochondria made from the infolding in the membrane. You can see another one right here. So this goes all the way through the mitochondria and the same thing is happening there as is happening here. We're just not looking at it. It's just not pictured. So these poten high potential energy electrons are passed down the chain losing some of their potential energy which is used to pump protons into this space from the matrix into the cisterna. And then after the last step in the electron transport chain, that now pretty low potential energy electron is passed on to oxygen. In other words, oxygen is the final electron acceptor. And oxygen makes a great final electron acceptor because it's so electronegative. So the electrons that it's, it holds are so low potential energy that by passing them to oxygen at the very end, the cell can harvest lots of potential energy from those electrons. And by accepting electrons, and it also picks up a couple of protons, that oxygen becomes part of water. Now what next? By passing these electrons, harvesting their potential energy, and using it to pump protons into this space, the electron transport chain, has built up a strong proton gradient. So there are a lot more protons in this space than there are out here, much higher concentration. And because of that, these protons can flow down their electrochemical gradients through ATP synthase, turning a crank that allows ATP synthase to produce ATP. And for each glucose molecule, this process can generate about 25 ATP, so a huge amount of ATP compared to these earlier steps. So this is where we harvest most of our ATP. So what about our hypotheses? Remember, we're now considering what's going to happen if we shut down the electron transport chain. Let's consider what happens when we shut down the electron transport chain. So it's no longer accepting and passing electrons. Now, the first thing we can notice is that if the electron transport chain isn't accepting electrons, then FADH2 and NADH are not going to get oxidized back to FAD and NAD+. So as a result, FADH2 and NADH are going to build up in the cell because they're not being oxidized. But FAD and NAD plus are going to go down because they're no longer being regenerated in this step. So another thing that's going to happen is because this electron transport chain isn't passing any electrons, it no longer is going to be passing electrons to oxygen. So oxygen is no longer going to be incorporated into water. So oxygen is also going to build up in the cell. And finally, most importantly, if the electron transport chain isn't working, then this gradient isn't going to be built up. And without this proton gradient, there's nothing to drive ATP synthase. So this ATP production isn't going to happen either. So your ATP is also going to fall. And this right here is what killed your patient if this is what went on. So coming back to our table, if our electron transport chain can't pass electrons, then our NAD plus levels are going to be low because the electron transport chain isn't oxidizing. Oops. NADH back to NAD plus. And for the same reason, our NADH levels are going to be high. So this is no longer being used by the electron transport chain and this is no longer being regenerated. So this is going to build up and this is going to run low. Oxygen, because the ETC isn't passing electrons to oxygen and converting it to water, is going to be slightly high as well.
So no more of this reaction. So this reactant O2 is going to build up. And then finally, most importantly, your ATP is going to be low because the ETC is no longer generating the proton gradient that drives most of ATP production. this second case if we have holes in the inner mitochondrial membrane. So what's going to happen to the levels of these same metabolites if I punch holes in the inner mitochondrial membrane? In other words, this membrane right here, what happens if I put holes in that membrane? Well, if I put holes in those membrane, then all of these steps that come before the electron transport chain, in fact, even the electron transport chain, will function just as normally because I'm not blocking any of those steps. So my same levels of all of these things that are produced by these early steps are going to be the same. And I won't go through all of them, but just keep in mind that everything is going to go as normal up through the electron transport chain step. So the levels of anything involved down here are going to be normal. But what isn't normal is that even though the electron transport chain is pumping protons across this membrane, they don't stay trapped because they're holes. They're just going to flow right out of the holes. And so I'm no longer going to have a proton gradient. And if I don't have a proton gradient, then I don't have anything to drive ATP synthase. And so this majority of ATP that normally gets made by ATP synthase isn't going to get made. So my NAD plus levels, again looking back at my picture, are going to be normal because I'm going to keep regenerating NAD plus when NADH donates its electrons to the electron transport chain. These are going to be normal. Same story for NADH. Same story for O2 because it's still accepting electrons at the end of the electron transport chain. The one level that is going to be disrupted is ATP. It's going to be low because again, I no longer have this proton gradient to drive chemiosmosis, the ATP production by ATP synthase.